tell us a little bit more about the research. Yeah, so uh, this research was funded by the National Science Foundation. Um, and we, what we endeavored to do is to look at the adoption and use of this, not only of just individuals, but how it was happening within a family. So we were looking at both parents and at teenagers. Um, and, and as a caveat that one of the things we found, which is part of the reason why it wasn't terribly effective, is there were not there was not wide scale adoption of this technology. So there, there was not as much adoption as we would have hoped for. But even in the midst of, of the those who did adopt it and those who did use it, we found uh, some interesting things. Um, one of which is, is your assumption in that the previous question you asked about, you know, my provider has it, they're able to track where I am at. We found that a, a lot of teenagers didn't want to use this sort of technology because they were afraid their parents were going to use this to track them and where they were going. And they're like, I want nothing to do with that. Um, which, which at some level demonstrates a misunderstanding of what this technology was all about, which is one of those barriers of adoption and use of, of something of this nature is if people don't understand it, if they don't get it, they're never going to use it in the first place, or they may be using it for wrong reasons, right? So on, on the flip side, if parents thought this is a great way to track their kids and where their kids have been, they might decide they're going to use it because it, it's one more parenting tool that they didn't know was available to them when in reality, that's not at all what this was. Um, so that, that, that lack of understanding may influence uh, how people think about these apps and what they might do to, to use them. For me, in a classroom with a large number of students, over 600, I would have loved for all of us to have the app and for it to just go out to everyone and me knowing that uh, 20 may have it and just to, to have that knowledge because we really didn't. So we were kind of going blindly and just masking up at that point. Yep. So Rob, we, um, you know, at Voices of Privacy, one of our key goal is to make sure everybody makes decisions that are informed, that they understand what's going on in terms of privacy and information that's being shared. And so, so if I interpret this in a certain way, it's that people were concerned about privacy, in, but it was because they didn't understand how the apps work. Is that correct? Is that a fair statement? I think that's a fair statement. I, I think we did see those results um, in, in the data that we collected, that um, a lack of understanding of privacy. So privacy is having an impact. People were considering that, but sometimes considering it with incorrect knowledge. Um, we, we did see differences in, in people's concerns over privacy related to the COVID-19 pandemic and, and the apps that were being used to, to help them. Um, but, but mostly, um, and, and I say which so this showed up mostly in our qualitative comments where we asked people about their concerns and so forth, showed up about 10 to 20% of the people, depending if we're talking to parents or children, about that being an aspect that they were concerned about the use of, of an app such as this.